So finally today when it comes to the second point update of watchOS 10 I'll be happy to let you know that there's a new update that we can update our devices to and right here on my device if we go into our settings of my Apple Watch Ultra right here and go to where it says software updates you can see watchOS 10.2 and this is developer beta 4 that we are talking about today. For me the update size on my Apple Watch Ultra is 563 megabytes. I was already on watchOS 10.2 betas. If you are updating for the first time, expect that up update size to be slightly larger than that. And the good thing about this is that this is not all that Apple released today. In fact, if we go to the Apple developer page right here, you see iOS 17.2 alongside iPadOS 17.2 beta 4. We also have macOS 14.2 beta 4 watchOS 10.2 beta 4 as well. This is the video for that. And we have tvOS 17.2 beta 4. Most of these updates I do cover here on the channel at Halfman Half Tech. So if you wanna get to know your devices and keep up to date with the latest updates, definitely do subscribe so that you don't miss out. So I'm just gonna update and charge my device and then search and see what's new within this update. So my device is now up to date. If we go into the settings right here, go to general and go to where it says about this watch, you can see watchOS 10.2 and the build number has been updated. In fact, it took four steps in the positive direction and giving us the build number 21S5358A. It has an A before on the previous beta 3, we had an E, so that's a good jump. And with an A build, it usually means that this is the final beta before we get the release candidate version. Most likely soon, that might be next week. I'll show you in a calendar when it comes to that pretty soon. So when it comes to some of the changes that I hear with this watchOS 10.2 beta 4, one of the main things that Apple highlights is the new contact key verification, a way that's here that allows you to be able to verify whether you are contacting or iMessaging with the right person on all your devices, be the Apple Watch or the iPhone, the MacBook. So in order for you to turn on contact key verification, you have to go into your settings. And then when you go to your Apple ID, if you go all the way down, you will notice contact key verification. If you click on it right there, you see this options that allows you to turn it on. And if you want to turn it on, you can turn it on right here and it will tell you all about contact key verification. You can continue or set up later. If we say continue at this point in time, it will tell us some of the devices that won't be supported for this or that have software that cannot be updated to the latest iOS version or watchOS version in order to use this feature. Feature. And right now we have this iPhone 6s. If your device hasn't yet been updated, then it will tell you or prompt you to update or it won't turn on that feature for that device. If we click OK, you can see it goes back and it doesn't turn on this contact key verification. So that's something that's good. It's meant for, to be used by people that are usually targeted like journalists or activists, but it's good to see that after one year since Apple talked about this, they've finally decided to add it to the Apple Watch with WatchOS 10.2. The second thing that I want to talk about when it comes to this update that has been mentioned by Apple, which I'm not really happy with at this point in time, is the new Siri updates that were promised. So with the latest or the newest devices that were released, Siri on device commands are now supposed to be faster, meaning that if you have poor Wi-Fi connection or if you have a cell connection and your reception is not that great, it shouldn't really affect or slow down that Siri. Maybe this is something that's going to be working seamlessly or better on the new Apple Watch Ultra 2 or the Apple Watch Series 9. But on my Apple Watch Ultra 1, Siri seems to be more or less the same. And when it comes to some of the new health prompts that it's supposed to be giving, it's only doing a limited selection. So for example, how many rings did I close? Let me do that again. How many rings did I close? So you see this, it shows me my rings and uh, it shows how much I've done so far. I'm homebound right now. So that's why you see everything is there. And then if we go into more complicated tasks, for example, 
How much do I weigh? I can't help you with that. We'll try something different. What's my current step count? Okay, so it shows me this and if I want to see more information, of course, I can remove move my digital crown and then let's try something even more complicated. What's my blood glucose level? I can't help you with that. Okay, didn't do that. And then what's my current respiratory rate? I can't help you with that. So you see, these are some of the questions that Apple showed on screen that I'm actually asking when they showed watchOS 10 and the new Apple devices when they released their latest ones. So maybe it's because this is the Ultra 1 and not the Ultra 2, but it doesn't seem to be responding to most of the questions that were shown. So hopefully there will be an improvement and it won't be a feature that's limited only to the newer ones, but it will also come to the Ultra one or the Apple Watch Series 8, maybe up to the Series 6. So that's something I thought I should mention. And then when it comes to changing your watch face, you see how I can change my watch face right here. It's pretty fast. And uh, this is something I've always been vocal about when Apple removed it. So it's good to see that this has been added where it allows us to swipe and change our watch face. And basically the way you can turn this on if you want is to go into your settings. And if you go to where it says clock, it's like the menu, main menu settings of uh, your watch. And if you click where it says clock right there, you see you have the option to swipe to change your watch face. If you turn it off and you try and swipe, it won't do anything. So you do have to go into your settings and then turn it on. And if you go to the watch face and then that's when you'll be able to swipe and change your watch face. So it's good to see that Apple has added that as an option for people that accidentally always swipe or do change their watch face not knowing they can turn this off. And if you want to keep it like it's always been and just change your watch face like I'm doing right now by swiping, which is how I prefer to do it, then definitely this is something that you would want to turn on. Another change that I noticed here, it doesn't really seem to have changed the overall function of the function or the feature itself. So it has to do with name drop. If you bring your device close to your iPhone, you notice the animation is more central and the haptic vibration seems to be more firm and the sound just listen again. Okay, so yeah, just overall, it seems to be have an updated animation when it comes to the name drop between the iPhone and Apple Watch. And then if you do it wrong, let's, let's try this. For example, I'll do it the sideways and then I'll let it fail. Sometimes it shows the animation that shows you how you are supposed to do the name drop feature or how you're supposed to connect the two devices together, but it's not popping up. I can't get it to show up again. Hmm, interesting, but that's just something that I thought I should mention. So that's about it for me when it comes to this watchOS 10.2 beta 4. This is probably the last beta before we are going to get the release candidate version. And in terms of when the next update or the final update is going to be coming out, I'll just show you here on my calendar. So today being November the 28th, you notice that we are a few weeks away from the second week of December. And usually the last two weeks of December, Apple takes a day or the two weeks off. So I would think that Apple is going to release the release candidate version, hopefully next week on the 5th of December. And then the final release, hopefully on the 12th. And most people that are wanting to test out the new features like name drop and uh, some new Siri updates as well as the contact key verification will be able to do that on the 12th of December. That's what I think. And that's about it for me. If you like this video, leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.